Hello, my name is David Coletta, and I'm the senior leader at Mission Community Church. Before you begin watching the Sermon of the Week, allow me to pray that you might encounter God right there where you are. Father, I ask that your spirit will be present right where people are watching this video. May they be receptive to the voice of your spirit as they watch in Jesus' name, amen. From all of us at MCC, may God bless you as you watch this week's message. There is a name that reigns without contention, whose power can't be questioned or contained. With humble faith, he rules the earth and heavens, and his glory knows no measure. First and past the borderlands of space. And Jesus, enthroned upon the freezes of our hearts. And Jesus, you're the king and you're the center of.
So hey guys, we've been in this series called Overcomers, Stories of Hope. And um, it's been a real blessing. And this series is taken from a verse in the Bible that's found in <clears throat> Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, where it says that they overcame him, that's Satan. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And we're, we're basing this series <clears throat> on the opportunity to allow individuals within our church to really share their testimony and, and to be honest, to be transparent. You know what? <clears throat> How many of you would agree that church for too long has been too much of a secretive place? Like we come in here and we gotta act holy, saintly, you know, make sure that there's not an eyelash out of place for the ladies, not for the men. And you guys, you know, you come all properly dressed and looking sharp and good. Everyone is looking great, polished on the outside, but we have somehow lost the art of being ourselves. And so we want to put a black eye into the face of the devil because we overcome him not just by all kinds of do's and don'ts and things that we do but we overcome him by what god has done in our lives and being able to tell others and so today it is our honor to welcome this beautiful couple amy and matt chapman would you welcome them as they come we're so blessed and honored to be able to do this, and uh, it's been so great to get to know some of our families, and you guys are getting to know some of their stories. And so uh, I want to ask by, first of all, asking you, uh, Matt, we'll start with you, and then we'll go to Amy. Um, to Amy, tell us a little bit about your childhood. How did you grow up? Did you grow up in a Christian family? Did you know the, uh, you know, the ways of the Lord, the things of God? How, how was your upbringing? Um, so I like to start with birth because the Lord really showed his hand from birth. Um, so I was born um, with cerebral palsy and I was born with a lung condition. I wasn't supposed to survive. Um, after birth, they rushed me to a children's hospital and I was in ICU for a very long time, um, about two weeks, and then I was released. Um, but the moment that my parents found out about that, um, they, they're prayerful parents, they love the Lord. Um, my dad just started praying for healing, but also, like we were learning about Hannah and Samuel, um, a surrender. So he had to go through that with my mom. Um, but the Lord healed me, and I'm walking, and I'm here. Hey, come on, just give the yeah. Lord a praise. Yeah, he deserves it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Wow. Yeah, um, and so my parents, uh, they're first-generation believers, so none of their family um, love the Lord or know the Lord, follow the Lord. Um, they were the trailblazers for that, um, and they, they dove in to the deep water. So they cut out their former life, went in for all things of the Spirit, all things of the Lord, um, anointing in the Holy Spirit, prayer, all of that. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I also grew up in a home that was steeped in the things of the kingdom, um, had parents that were involved in ministry. My dad's now a full-time pastor. Um, so I was pretty switched on to who the Lord was in my life. So <clears throat> let's fast forward a little bit into your life as a teenager. What was Matt as a teenager? Were you like one of those wild kids? <laughs> Couldn't be stopped. No, not wild. Dri uh, driving a convertible. I don't know. Like I wish. That would have been amazing. 
I wish. Um, my dad got a convertible later on in life, and I had fun with it. But um, as far as growing up, I, I loved school. I loved sports. I loved any activity I could get into, um, eventually video games, all of that. Um, I, I was a people pleaser, so for a lot of my life um, as a teenager, I just wanted to please my parents, wanted to please adults, anyone else that I could. Um, and so I, as far as growing up, I didn't really ever do anything outside of the norm. Did you have a relationship with the Lord at that point? Like, Did, did that keep you from some of the wild ways of... I, I would say yes. I would say um, I knew the Lord. Um, part of my family, one of the things that my parents encouraged were to do daily devotions and, and enter into that. Um, I was in a really good church community um, during that time in, in Canada, um, and they really encouraged any age, much like what MCC does here, to come to know the Lord, You know, begin to understand the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit moving, blessing, all of that. Um, so in those years, I, I did know the Lord, and, and I think I, I would say I'd had a, I had a really deep relationship with him. Yeah. Canadian, eh? Canadian, eh? <laughs> hey, Amy, how about you? Yeah, I think having grown up in the church, um, I probably wrote the coattails of my parents' faith a little bit, um, and it became more personal, my faith, more in teens and college years. Um, I did a lot of missionary dating. I always was talking to the boys, and so I think that kind of distracted me a little bit, um, but also a people pleaser, like firstborn type A, love to be in control, and so I think um, at the point that the Lord really got a hold of my heart as a teenager, um, it gave me a lot of freedom that I didn't know I needed. So Amy, did you see anything in the church as a PK, a preacher's kid, that kind of turned you off, or were people generally, oh, okay, I can handle this, like, how was that for you? Was that advantageous to be a preacher's yeah. kid? Yeah, I mean, I think that label can come with so many different feelings, but for me, I saw my parents fight for the bride, and that was such a beautiful depiction later on when we went through things in our marriage of, you don't just walk away, you stay, and yes, people hurt people, but the church, that's, that's God's remnant, and we stay, and we work through it. Beautiful. So you have one child, Tio. Yes. And how long have you guys been married? Well, I've been married for six years in September. Okay. Yeah, awesome. six years. Nice. Uh, so what was it like in your early days of your marriage? Were you guys like head over heels, like soulmates, doing things together? Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so we um, met pretty young. I was 19 when I met Matt, and he was 23. Um, and so we got married early 20s, and I think... We were both working full time, we had a busy social life, we really enjoyed each other's company. Um, and I would say that I felt like we had a good marriage. Um, I think I was maybe aware of a little bit of passivity in Matt in different areas um, that may kind of have fed into a lack of emotional intimacy sometimes. Um, but I'm a busy bee, I never sit still, and Matt loves to lounge. Like he has lounging down. And so <laughs> when. <laughs> When we got married, it was just, I was like scratching my head, like what, I, we have so many things to do, there's people to see, that we're gonna seize the day. And so in, at the beginning, I just thought- and I'm just there. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, pretty much here. <laughs> <laughs> so I attributed a lot of that to, oh, we have personality differences, but that's fine. Marriage is about compromise and we'll work on that. We have time. So they say, right? <laughs> 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 Whoops. Um, <clears throat> So, I mean, here's the other thing. You're, you were born in... England. England. Where's that accent, Amy? It's really a shame, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to work on that. And uh, Matt is American by way of Canada back to the United States. Yes. I mean, we know it because I was born and raised in Italy. Lois is Canadian, eh? And, uh, <laughs> and so we had to adjust. Oh, yeah. And... Bring in, <laughs> where are the counselors? I think we need somebody here. To, um, but bringing two cultures together, that's, that's, a, that's a challenge, right? Yeah. Did that, was that difficult for you, Matt, to accept the European way of freedom? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> it was a very gracious introduction, and I think... So I'm going to do a really kind of funny plug here. I think something that helped me out is I loved the 
modern version of Pride and Prejudice, which is, it's, a, it's an awesome movie. Um, I have it over there right now, actually. Yes. If anyone wants to borrow it, I've got it on. Love it. Yeah. And I think that helped me get into a little bit of the language and understanding, like, culture dynamics and different things. Um, but then I really just wanted Amy. Like, I wanted to pursue her. I wanted to love her. And so any of the family integrations was something that I wanted to get used to so that we could get there. Um, and then my in-laws were just amazing in saying words once or twice or three times so that I could understand some of the language, yeah. um, like controversy, which is controversy, those kinds of things. Oh, okay. um, so that helped, and then they had some really helpful like sitcoms or shows that oh, we go. watched together so I could get into the culture and understand it a little bit more. Yeah, Benny Hill? Or, or <laughs> uh, well, that probably was way before your time. I yeah. think only a few people know what I'm talking about here, Benny Hill. We started out speaking the same language, which helps. Yeah. You did not. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, by the way, we do love every culture. We, you know, I mean, we're, we're a picture of that. So I know we have South Africans, and Amy's mom is here. She's from England, so no issues with British people. Just we love all kinds. Uh, you know, we're things are going to get a little bit more um, honest and truthful here. So. Matt and Amy walked into MCC in uh, one Sunday, I think it was April, in the month of April 2021. And uh, you walked in here. Tell us a little bit about your experience, what you experienced yourself, and what that meant that Sunday. What did God do for you? Yeah, so much like most of us, we were in a place of transition. You know, that was... Um, when COVID was still around and there were restrictions and things and um, we were just in a transition from a church that we were at and looking and landed here at MCC. Um, and that Sunday, I mean, we walked through the doors and I was already looking for and expecting something. Uh, I think the Lord just spoke that in both of our spirits of just to come in with some expectation and met a gentleman in the lobby and he was just so welcoming and and all of that and I was just like okay if this is just what a man in the lobby is like then I'm expecting something more from from the service props and, to the hospitality team. yes props to the hospitality <laughs> yes um and so we come in and there's worship and um I, I think part way through worship the Lord was just moving and Amy and I both felt him moving um and I think, David, I think you actually came up and, and you stood up here and you're like, I think the Lord is telling us to open up for prayer, for healing, physical healing, mental. And then you, you named my thing, you said, and pornography. And I was like, okay, that's me. And Amy and I were already working through a place of healing and growth and in that. Um, and so I looked at her and I was like, I think this is for me. And so I raised my hand, and she stood up with me, um, and we, we were right back there, right in front of that pillar, um, and then you said, church body, let's pray for these people. And so people just came around, um, and, and I think there were four or five men by that point. I was already crying and snotting, and the Lord was <laughs> doing things, um, and I, the Lord just allowed you guys to bless and pray and just solidify the healing that he was already doing, but just to say, this freedom is for you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. And I, um, I don't know, I think there were a few people, I think Dan and Robert and myself and Wayne and some others. Uh, and not only were you praying and crying and snotty, so was Amy. What was happening in your heart, Amy, at that point? Yeah, like Matt said, I had come in expectant and I, I felt parched in the church sense, because we hadn't f had anything that felt like normal for so long. And from the minute that we came in, I just felt kind of like what Evie was talking about up here at a homecoming. I just felt so much comfort and peace here. So when you had said, you know, I think we need to pray for people with pornography addictions, I was like, well, Lord, he's, I knew he was going to raise his hand even before he told me, or, you know, and so I, as I sat there, it was so powerful and it, 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 I was weeping, but they were tears of release and joy because I could see what God was doing. And um, 
I remember it was when MCC still had the stickers. You could put a sticker on, depending on like what level of comfort you had with touching. And um, David had a green sticker on, and Matt had a green sticker on. And as they were praying, both of those stickers fell off. And I looked, and the Lord just said, this is your green light. This is home. And I knew we were going to become members here in that moment. Wow. Precious. And, you know, after uh, Matt, um, you know, after we finished praying, I asked if anyone had a testimony. And um, Matt came and sat right on the second chair in the front. And uh, to be honest, you know, as a as a pastor, you don't know the person that's standing in front of you. You're kind of like wondering, what do I do now? Do I give him the microphone? <laughs> What's he going to say? <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, Mac came up and he shared his testimony of how the Lord had been setting him free. I think you mentioned that you were like at 80% free from the sin of pornography. And that, that was that last... 20% that just like the chains fell off and you could at, at that moment you could hear a fly go by <laughs> it was just so so quiet and everyone was amazed it's like wow is is this guy really saying that he has an issue with pornography like that's that's a big sin we don't talk about that in the church. That's a problem, guys. We don't talk enough about it because God wants to set us free, but we hold it back and we hold God back from setting us free from this very thing. And so, Matt, um, your curiosity with pornography, when, when did that start? How did that start? And, and that's important to mention. I will tell you why. Because um, statistics say that 77 zero, okay, percent of people in the church. And that doesn't mean that it's, you know, out of 100 here, there's 70 that, that do, okay? But statistically, every 10 of us Seven of us are addicted to pornography. And amongst that group, 30% are women. It's not just an issue with men. So <clears throat> tell us a little bit about how did that become an addiction? Did it start with a little something and it just slowly grew into an addiction in your life? So I think... Curiosity is, is big when it comes to sexual things. And um, I think one thing for me was my parents, I think, I think they did things right. Like they introduced books like Every Man's Battle. We had a talk or two. Um, but then when I was kind of brought into physical relationship between a, a guy and a girl, at this point it was teenagers like me, um, I, I saw two of my really good friends fooling around. Um, it, it just brought down curiosity, like, what is this? Why, why are they so into this? It kind of seems weird to me. I only ever knew hugging and, and all of that. Um, and so that kind of started the thinking. And, then, uh, and that was around when I was 11. And then at 12, um, a friend of mine... I was hanging out at his house, and he whipped out a DVD, and it was a, it was a porn DVD, um, and started watching it, and I was really curious, and things were happening in my body, and I was like, okay, what is this? I feel arousal. This is, I'm curious, um, and, and so that kind of branched it on, um, and then ever since then, like those images of seeing my friends, seeing those first clips of that video, it just, I was like, I want to know more about this because it's just, it's, it's arousal, it's, it's interesting. Um, and so from there, I, I kind of drifted away from the hardcore porn, if you would, because um, it, it kind of weirded me out a little bit, um, but I was still open to that. And so magazines and different things, um, I mean, walk in a grocery store and there are things that can entice a man. Um, but then what really ramped it up 
was my my dad lost his job in Canada and we were on visa and so the decision was made to move back to the states um, and that that happened right around 13 14 for me and I thought I was gonna stay in Canada I thought I was gonna find a wife one day I loved my church I loved my school I loved everything that was happening um, things aside from pornography at that time things looked great for me um, but then knowing that we had to move it just crushed me um, I, I would definitely say if if I could look back then at Matt he was depressed um, he was anxious um, he didn't know up from down um, I was just slogging through life dragging my feet um, me now versus me then. I was the kid in class who was wearing sweaters in summer here in North Carolina in sweatpants or jeans. Like, I was just that that kid. Um, and so, pornography at that point became a comforter for me. Um, it wasn't the Lord. I, I kind of turned away from the Lord. I blamed him for the move. Uh, I blamed my parents for the move. I was just angry at anything. And porn was the crux. That was the thing that was like, Okay, whenever you're upset, whenever you're angry, whenever you're feeling these deep feelings or any of that, um, I didn't want to show those or share those. So I would just go and I would use and then I would go on with life limping along. Wow. So Amy, you're married. Um, are you noticing anything? Is your intimacy impacted? What are you walking through? Yeah, so when we dated, we had kind of had a bare all the or air all the dirty laundry kind of conversation so i thought um so i knew that matt had used porn past tense it was something he struggled with past tense um and so going into marriage i thought well i should probably check in on about that every once in a while you know um but it was not often i mean i didn't really want to I didn't want to feel like I was nagging him or being paranoid. So maybe like once a quarter, I'd be like, hey, how are you with temptation? And he'd be like, oh, you know, temptation is there. It always is when you're a guy, but I'm, I'm good. Um, and I, our physical intimacy was not impacted. I thought for sure I, if that would have been like one of the biggest red flags, but it wasn't. Um, and I, like I said, I did maybe feel some emotional intimacy. He could be distant sometimes, or it felt like maybe there were some no-go conversation areas that could lead to a fight or something but again i'm thinking we're early 20 something's newly married this is probably normal you know maybe stressed with work one week I'm just gonna let it go yeah okay and matt when did you get to a point in your life where you realized okay i i can't i can't live like this something needs to change i can't i need help what happened was there a specific low point again well, Amy, I'm gonna need your help here. Was it 2020 or 2021 when I got that word from the Lord? I can't remember. I'll, I'll, I'll say 2020, <laughs> yeah, I'll say 2020. Um, so Amy and I started this thing after we got married. Um, we, we probably got it from someone else, but um, asking the Lord for a word for the year. Um, and so 2020, the word that I got that December was freedom. Um, and at that time, we were still in fellowship with other believers and everything. I was still actively using porn. Um, and I ended up having an opportunity to talk with some of the guys in that, in that group, that core group that I had. And we all felt that same pull or push of, we want to be free of this. We don't want this anymore. The Lord just impressed upon our hearts that you can be free. Um, and I just want to ask it really quickly. I know when we had talked before about like temptation and things, Matt would say, well, you know, Paul talked about a thorn in his flesh that he had his whole life. And um, it's so infuriating how the enemy can twist scripture in that way and it, kind of tell Matt, you'll have this for life, but it's okay because Paul had a thorn. And that's just sometimes we all have a thorn. Um, and so I, Matt and I had talked about that before, and again, I didn't know he was actively using and just so entrenched in pornography, but he talked about his temptation in that light. And so when he joined this group, he kind of um, positioned it to me as, I don't know if Paul really did want to have a thorn all of his life, if that was God's heart for him. Like, God can pull thorns out, and that's where this group kind of came from. Yeah, so I wasn't actually the first person who engaged. Um, there was another friend of mine, um, he was found out so in that group, he was found out. Um, and so it became a thing for him, like he needed this. 
Like, it's not just, I got a word. It's like, I need this. And so he talked with one of, one of us and then talked with me. Um, and then we kind of just came together in a group chat one time. And we're like, we need to start something. Let's start some sort of accountability group. Let's dive into this. Let's encourage one another. Let's start using material. And so we all decided collectively we're going to start meeting. We're going to start meeting weekly at this time. We're going to do this. And, and from there, it kind of just started us in a trajectory, us, us three or four guys, and we want to reveal. That was the next step. So we, we took a couple of months of just encouraging one another, praying for one another, looking at curriculum, encouraging counseling or therapy and all of that kind of stuff. And then because we came up with that system of sharing, we each took an opportunity. We would allow one individual to share with their spouse and we would just support him through that because it's, it's hard. Like you're, yeah. there's betrayal, there's all of that. Yeah. And then the next and then the next. And That's so good. Yeah. That's so good. So when that happened, Andy, what was your response? So it must have been a shock. It was a shock. So Matt came to me, it was March of 2020, right before lockdown started. And we had this conversation and I was so shocked and I felt so many different things. I mean, it was just like this whirlwind of disappointment. I felt violated. I felt betrayed. Um, I was angry. I was so angry Um, because we had Theo was about eight, nine months old at this point. So, you know, I'm like figuring out the mom thing. Life is stressful. And I was like, Lord, I do not have time for this. This is the worst. I mean, there's never a convenient time to hear these things, but it was (laughs) not great. And um, I remember that night, um, we have a guest room and I just, I couldn't sleep. So I went to the guest room and I just started journaling and telling God all the things, yelling at God about all the things. And I was weeping and I just, I had this thought cross my mind. Um, and I, I, it was the enemy, but I, he, he was like, you, you could hurt Matt back. I knew that Matt was afraid that this would all be too much and I would leave. That was kind of part of when he shared with me, he just said, I really, uh, I'm, I haven't wanted to tell you because I'm so afraid that you would go or bring Theo and just go. And in my head, I thought, well, I could not be here when he wakes up in the morning. That would really like, (laughs) and as I kind of thought that and vocalized it, something just broke in me. And it was like all of a sudden the Lord was like, but you don't want to do that to you. And I thought, no, it's not that I want to go. I want to stay and fight. I just had to get that really ugly little thing out of me and just say it. That was like the worst possible thing I could say. And God was big enough to handle that too. Um, and I don't know if you have portrait mode on your phone, but it was like portrait mode where the porn, the pain, all of those feelings didn't go away, but God brought into focus, like we're making a battle plan. You know, it doesn't diminish that we will work through those things. Those things are real. Um, thank you. Um, but I want you to, to stay. And, and what it broke me even more was thinking, Matt has been living in chains for over half of his life. Like, and that God gave me compassion in that moment. I, could, I am sinful too. I could not have come up with these things on my own. It was the Holy Spirit saying, look at my child. Look how hurt he is. And... Our marriage is not a mistake, right? The Lord brought us together so that we could be a unit. And this is my chance to fight for him in sickness and in health. And this is the sickness part. I'm staying. Thank you, Lord. I think that that's there's so many nuggets of truth in what you said, because I think we have to realize that at a stage in life where you have to speak a truth of sort like this is such a heavy weight it has to be done in in the proper way proper order and and uh uh wow amy that that was a beautiful response and and that should really be our response as believers to really you know commit our lives to the lord that he knows what he's doing but there's something very powerful that you shared matt before and it, it's related to the fact that you had a support group, guys that, that you spoke with, that it, I, you know, we all go through stuff, guys, let's, let's face it. And we can hide behind a, our hands raised and a facade that everything is great, but we all go through difficulties and challenges and sins that are hard to let go. 
and just having someone that you can talk to, having someone that you can share. And I, I imagine that when that first guy went and spoke to his wife and then so on and so forth, that there must have been revelation and freedom even in that. Now, you also went for counseling. You've done some of that. Tell us a little bit about that. That encourages, I think, everybody to realize that this is not just a one and done thing, you know. And, and can I just say that um, God is a powerful God, and he does change hearts and lives. But the fact of the matter is that we need all the help that we can get. Amen. So can I just say, when we open the altars for prayer here, and we ask some of our leaders to come and pray, it's because we need, we need that prayer. We need that encouragement. And we're going to do that, you know, in, in a little bit. We're going we're gonna to ask some of our leaders and and, and, and hopefully that there will be openness and honesty. And, and if you're struggling with pornography, maybe it's, maybe it's not the time to, tell you, to turn around to your wife and tell her right there and then and just go for prayer. You may want to, you know, or, or vice versa, uh, you know, have some form of, of strategy at least. But let, let's not be so hard-hearted that we don't allow God to work in those moments when he wants to work. So what did you guys do in terms of your counseling? Amy, why don't you start, and then Matt, tell us a little bit more about your group. Yeah, so we realized that, like I said, we had our battle plan. We were going to recast vision for our marriage, but we needed help. And so um, Matt and I started therapy together, and in that first session realized I would actually benefit from some one-on-one -on -one time with a therapist. So I did that, and then Matt was also simultaneously seeing a therapist. Um, and I think for me, especially as a, a young mom, I needed that place to go where I wasn't like distracted by the dishes or the laundry. I could just go and be. And I mean, it, it hurt. We're a single income household. We were both in counseling at the same time. That's expensive. But one of the things the Lord had told me that night when I was first just so broken, he gave me Joel 2.25 and said, I will restore the years that the locusts have stolen. Because that's what I felt. I felt like time and memories had been stolen from me. And so I, I knew that the Lord would not only provide for therapy, which he did, and we had brought our families into it at this point, so they were babysitting for us so we could go. Like, therapy was our date night, basically. And we just kind of reallocated and went with it. Um, and one of the first things that our therapist said when we first did our consult call, which was so helpful, especially if you're a woman whose husband is struggling in this way, was, it is not your fault. And that just immediately, like, it, I felt so free because you're thinking, I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I'm not enough. And if I'm not enough now, I may not be enough. Even if he is healed, it could happen again. And when the therapist said, it is not your fault, that helped me so much. And I also learned about the fact that this is an addiction, so it is about rewiring the brain. Because there is a chemical release when you're using. That's why it feels good. Even if you feel terrible about the consequences, it feels good in the moment. And so that helped. And, and, as, and as much as it was about rewiring Matt's brain, it was also about rewiring mine through therapy, rewiring it to a place of trust and rewiring it to believe um, in God's capability to take care of me. Even if Matt disappointed or failed me, the Lord was with me and he would be enough. Yeah, uh, and then for me, I mean, the guys group was pivotal. Like those weekly meetings that we were doing, just being able to come, be honest, transparent, be like, hey, this is what I'm struggling with. These are some things, thoughts that I'm dealing with. Um, we came up with a plan of how we would talk. Um, we use it, the, and it's probably used in other curriculums, but it's called the face. So you just walk through these things. Um, so feelings, accountability, um, Accountability is, is a little bit like high and lows. And you just walk through all of these things. Um, and we all wanted to lean in, just be really honest and transparent, which I think was a big thing. Like we all bought into it. If, if one of us didn't or if some of us didn't want to, you could really easily just continue with the lie if you wanted to. Um, but the thing is, we knew that the Lord wanted us to be free and we knew that we needed this for our marriages and our families um, and for our lives. Like. The Lord does not want us to be chained. Like, he wants us to be free. That's, that's what Jesus did. Um, and so that was huge. We all bought into that. We all wanted that. Um, and then as, as well as revealing to our spouses, we also wanted to reveal to our families because, you know, it's 
us and then our family and then outside of that. And so um, revealing to my, my siblings, my parents, Amy's parents and her siblings um, in the response received was, we want this for you too, like all around. Yeah. It's like, we want you to be healed, whatever we can do, just let us know how we can help. And so that, that was pivotal, how they were willing to watch Theo while we went to counseling. Um, and my mother-in-law was working with some people at that time. Um, and there's this really great book written called Becoming a King, um, which just really encouraged you know, you're a king, become a king of the domain, reclaim the territory. Um, so that was huge. And then in counseling and therapy, um, the therapist I had was just amazing. Just walking through, letting me look at the past, gain new perspective of these really hurtful things that happened and healing those bound, those, those wounds and rebinding them. And then also allowing me to work in restoration in different relationships that, that I felt hurt or or anything like that. So just coming to those cores and then also reformatting my mind around the addiction. Um, so that was, those were some steps that were taken. And I think I was in therapy almost almost a year. Um, and then eventually he was like, you did the work. And he's like, you can graduate, you can come back to me if you want to, but you're doing the work and it's working. Um, so that was a huge uplifting for us of just having kind of a sign off from a therapist of like, yeah. he's progressing. Incredible. Um, did you look at a root issue? Was there something that would have they would have considered a root issue, or was that different for you? I think when I was thinking about that, I wanted affection really deeply. I wanted affection, um, and I think through the main parts of using really happened when we moved from Canada. Like that's when it was daily, all of that. Um, and I wanted affection, I wanted attention, I wanted someone to listen to my feelings and everything. And I think I'm not putting blame on anyone, but my family and I, we were all going through our different issues from moving, like hurts, brokenness, disappointments, frustrations. We were all going through our own things. And so we were all coping yeah. using our own mechanisms. Um, and some were like mine, some weren't. Um, but I think that was the big thing. I wanted to be heard, I wanted affection, and it just, it was hard to give at that moment. And so that's, that's why I turned to that. Um, but the therapist allowed me to figure out those roots and start working with God and pulling them away. Yeah. Matt, tell us a little bit, what, what are some of the safeguards that you put in place? Because obviously uh, the, the fabric of your marriage probably had a few tears through this issue. What did you do to mend those tears and also to set up some <clears throat> guardrails around your life so that you don't repeat some of those or fall into the same temptations? Yeah, uh, so one of, the, one of the big things obviously was that accountability group. We're still meeting weekly. Um, we call it guys club or boys club, boys club. <laughs> um, and so that, that is still something huge and in, in that meeting, we're an open book. Like, anyone can fire a question, we have to answer. Um, if we're uncomfortable, they you know, like, sit with your uncomfortability and then answer. And so we walk with each other through that. Um, another thing is working through different curriculums. Um, Seven Pillars of Freedom, I would fully endorse that. They offer amazing curriculums, or even if you need a group, you can go into a group there. Um, Amy had control over my phone. We got parental mode over my phone. It's the only device I have right now, uh, um, like internet device, and so she has control over those things. Um, and then Amy and I, through counseling, developing communication and just opening the door, like anything that she wants to ask, I will answer and vice versa, like just really opening up. And I think beforehand, um, like Amy was, was saying, emotional unavailability was something that, that I was giving towards her. I was not available. She would ask things, I would turn it on her, those kinds of things, and it kind of, re therapy allowed us to rework that breakdown in communication, emotional availability. I, I, I wanna just pause here for a moment and say that I think couples that are your age do a lot better than couples our age. And, and that, with that, I wanna say that 
if you've been married a little bit longer, somehow we have to find a way. And you know what? My wife and I, um, we don't have a perfect marriage. Uh, and uh, we work through things like anybody else. And one of the things that, that we have been practicing a little bit more lately is that very aspect of being open to answer some very uncomfortable questions or having some very uncomfortable conversations that don't, you don't feel settled, <laughs> uh, but at, when you walk away from those conversations, you feel like, you know what? That really messed me up, but I'm like kind of grateful that we had that talk, you know? And I, I want to say that if you've been married for a little longer, you need to exercise that. And if you're not yet married, start thinking about exercising that because that's so important. Yeah. Amy, what would you tell a spouse that's facing the same issues that you faced and what would you recommend that they do? That's a, a big question. Um, I think one of the things the Lord taught me is that, or showed me again, I suppose, is that joy and grief commingle so often in the kingdom. And the Lord is really, really good at taking the bittersweet and extracting the bitter and leaving the sweet. And th I believe that what Matt and I have now is worth it. It didn't feel great. It did not feel fun to go. And I mean, you know, there's still some hard conversations sometimes, but the enemy would, especially, so in our situation, say, with the husband, the enemy would have the husband believe that the wife won't love him anymore um, and that she would maybe turn her back or, you know, and that keeps the darkness kind of thriving. And so bringing everything into the light has brought us so much closer. I feel like I have him back. And I didn't even, like, I'm, I'm relearning him um, because, yes, we, he wasn't using as much when we were dating, but the person that I'm married to now is so much more vibrant and dynamic, and I see that healing in him. And I get to have a front row seat. Like, that is such a gift. Um, the other thing I've had to learn is how to let him lead again because the porn addiction really does subdue a lot of that leadership. And I was doing a lot just in our kind of life admin and even in our marriage, I was definitely taking charge. And I've had to learn, you know, in trusting him again, how to take a step back and give him space and know that it's okay if he flounders a little, this is new. Um, but he is supposed to be, you know, my partner and I'm not supposed to be the one driving on my own, like leaving him in the dust. That's right. Matt, how about you? What, what are some of the things that you would tell somebody? And I, uh, you know, this is a bigger problem for men. So instead of looking at, at us, just look at everyone, look at the camera and just, just this is your chance to be the evangelist, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would have to say first, it's confessing your sins to one another and you will be healed. Like that is, that's true. Like, you might tell yourself that that can't happen, but it, it does. Um, I'm living proof of that. Um, the Lord wants us to be free, to be restored, to be healed. And nothing is too big or too dark or anything for, for him to be able to heal, him to restore. Um, and yes, there, there is going to be hardship in going through. Um, there might be some things that you need to submit to, um, but ultimately the healing that comes on the back end of working through that those are growing pains and you grow more mighty and you grow more christ-like and you right. grow more unified yes. through those processes yeah. and i'm believing that our son will not be addicted to pornography because of the work his father is doing now you say why why is it that we're talking about this and why are we so open about it? Well, let me let me just give you some statistics as we wrap it up. Maybe some of us don't realize it, but over 40, 40, 40 million Americans are regular visitors to pornographic sites every day. 40 million. There are 42 million pornographic sites that you can access. So when you think about it, every person has unlimited access to filth and garbage that the enemy is just hand-delivering to anybody that's got a curiosity. 
The porn industry's annual revenue, are you ready for this, is more than the NFL, the NBA, and the Major League Baseball's revenue combined, guys. Combined. These people are being empowered, empowered by individuals. 47% of Amer American families reported that pornography is a problem in their home, 47%. And then pornography increases the rate of infidelity in marriage by a staggering 300%. It is a big problem. Not only is that a problem in general, but listen to this, 11, 11 is the average age that a child is first exposed to porn. That was Matt's testimony. You say 11 years old. Yeah, 11 years old, guys. 11. And 94% of children, 94% will actually have seen or been exposed to pornographic material by age 14. We have a responsibility as parents to protect our children. And you're right, hon. To get clean first ourselves and then to protect our children. The God of this age, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, says that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they will not see the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ. It is our responsibility to bring the truth to receive the truth, bring the truth, and allow the truth to penetrate in our lives. And as parents and grandparents, we have an incredible, heavy responsibility to teach our children. Because you know what? In our educational system, and we prayed about it last night, our educational system is aimed to give our children pornographic material in their hands by, I don't know what age, five, six it's disgusting. It's yeah. disgusting. Yeah, I want to mention too, I, be careful, even the stations and the kids' cartoons and the movies, et cetera, that you're allowing your kids to watch because the enemy is very, very, very cunning and he knows how to weave it in mm -hmm. because that's why we need to take back our media. The Seven yeah. Mountains is one of the areas. Yeah. We need to take it back. Yeah, that's right. So Amen. Be very careful. Amen. Be vigilant. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and you know what? Um, uh, you have every right as a spouse to check your wife's or your husband's phone. A wife has full access to mine. Uh, she has the passcode. There's no passcode that any of us should have that our spouses don't have. I want to say that out loud. And if you don't allow that in your life, you're opening the door for the enemy to come in. So open up that door. It may be painful at first. It may be difficult. But the rewards, like Amy said just now, are so incredibly powerful. We can't allow what the enemy is trying to do in our society to continue. Because pornography also contributes to... Uh, all sorts of evil. Yeah. All sorts of evil. Jesus. I'm sure that if you talk to Kayla, she'll tell you the, what, what happens in, in, in trafficking, the trafficking world. It all starts with an image, a seed, the eye gate, the ear gate. Yeah. When those are open, the enemy is full control. Jesus. And that's got to stop. Yeah. It's got to end. And you know what? We have you, the privilege to say enough is enough. You want to see God move in your life? You want to see God move in your marriage? Do you want to have peace in your home? Do you want to see God bless your life, bless you financially, bless you with peace, bless you in so many ways? Start by taking some of these very basic things that we need to do and take them to heart. Take them to heart. Take him to heart. Jesus. God wants to do great things. 
It's our responsibility to say yes, Lord. Yeah, I wanted to say too, there's no condemnation in Jesus. If you have a voice talking to you and saying something negative, it's typically not Jesus. It's typically the enemy taunting you and wanting to put you into shame and guilt. Um, But just know that there is no condemnation from David or I, from any of our any of our pastors or leaders. And um, yeah, this is, we're, guys, that's a healthy family. That's right. We have to become healthy. We have to be willing to do what Matt and Amy did with their families, yeah. opening up, talking. We haven't always done it that great. There are a lot of things we wish we could have done better and changed, but here we are. Let's get up and just do it. That's right. Let's start. Yeah. Amen. And can I add, because uh, I, I just remembered from Lois, thank you, the, the testimony when I was able to stand up here on that first Sunday after you vetting, um, the Lord revealed to me, you know, isolation is the enemy's plan, mm-hmm. and he wants to keep you isolated. He wants to yeah. make you feel yeah. like you are the only one dealing with this addiction, this thing. Yeah. And as soon as you bring it to the light, yeah. that's when victory comes yeah. through. Jesus, we thank you so much. Uh, for the gifts that you've given us, Lord, of your sacrifice. Lord, it, it is for freedom that we have been made free, Lord. You you did everything that you've done so that we could be made new, so that old could be put away and the new could come. Lord, you want for us to run free, Lord. Take the shackles off our feet so we could dance, Lord. Um, so, Jesus, I just thank you so much for the freedom that you want to bring. And this house is a house of freedom, Lord. So I just pray, Lord, that over the minds and the hearts of the men and women in this congregation, Lord, that you would just speak tenderly, Lord. It is your kindness that brings us to repentance, Lord. You are so kind to us, and you want to bring us into a place of freedom. So, Lord, I just pray that over the minds and hearts that they would recognize your kindness and that you want them to come into the light. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you for watching the Sermon of the Week. We pray that you were blessed by it and you felt prompted to act upon what the Spirit of God was saying to you. If you live in the Charlotte area, we would love for you to come and worship with us at one of our weekend gatherings. That way you can find out more about our church family and what we value most. We encourage you also to give to our ministry so that we might continue spreading the gospel of Jesus to our city and throughout the world. To do so, you simply go to missioncommunity.cc, click on the Give button, and the rest is simple. Lastly, I would encourage you to check out the remaining content on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. That way you will receive all of the reminders for fresh content that we put out. Have a wonderful rest of your day. May God bless you and thank you again for watching this week's message.